Good day guys and welcome back to my tragic little channel. Now today the weather's a little bit overcast. It's warm enough but it's just yeah, it's just not a, not a great day to be out taking photographs I don't think today. So I thought I'd change things up a little bit and do something that I've never done before and probably will never do again. <laughs> An actual book review. When I say a book, it's more of a picture book. There are captions in it. I've got a small collection of photo books and this is one that is quite dear to my heart. My hometown is called Castleford in West Yorkshire, England. Coal mining, chemicals, clothing factories. It's an industrial town, or it, it was an industrial town. I mean, all of the heavy industry now has gone. The coal covens have gone, the coal mines have gone, the chemical factories have gone. That's just the way it is now, unfortunately. Two miles along the road from my hometown is a little village, a pit village, coal mining village called Fryston. The pit itself has long since gone. Most of the houses have long since gone. And what remains now is just a, a, a small collection of terraced houses and a, and a bit of a park. And that's, and that's all I can remember. I've been away from the best part of 20 years now. Uh, so maybe things have changed, I don't know. There was one guy, a guy called Jack Hume. He was nicknamed Mr. Fryston by the locals. He was a former coal miner, then he had a bad injury. He went on to become the village barber. So Jack Hume was born in Fryston Village in 1906. For over 60 years, Jack made photographs of the comings and goings, the, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, the people of Fryston Village. Now in 1985, a small arts group called the Yorkshire Arts Circus put out an appeal for photographs for a, for a project they were doing called Local Voices. Jack saw this in 1985 and he decided to send a few of his photographs in, I think about half a dozen photographs. The guys at the Arts Circus were so impressed, they contacted Jack again and said, mate, have you got any more of these? A few more stashed around? Jack replied, I've got about 10,000 more in the attic, if that's any help. So the Yorkshire Arts Circus went, viewed the photographs, collated them, put on an exhibition at the Pontefract Museum in 1986. Over 10,000 people went through the museum to see his work, which has since been shown throughout Great Britain and Europe. Now he bought his first camera at the age of 14 in 1920. It was a used box brownie with a few glass plates. He paid the princely sum of half a crown. From those glass plates, Jack moved on to shoot with 120 roll film. And then the big change. In 1941, his first wife, Lydia, saved 91 pounds which is around 1,800 pounds in today's money. She bought Jack a Leica, with which he shot many of his best pictures. He developed the exposed film in the pantry. He then printed the negatives using an enlarger made from an old vacuum cleaner. Jack was quoted as saying, I love taking photos. That was my hobby. I didn't gamble, smoke or drink, or any of these habits you spend your money on. But the camera was my best friend. I'll be taking photos to the day I die. It has been my great love. Jack was photographed on the doorstep of his frightened home a couple of years before he died. A passerby looked on. Jack looked at him and said, It's all right. I'm Jack Young. I'm famous, you know. World famous round here. Jack sadly passed away at the age of 83 in January 1990, just four years after his work became widely known. Jack is long gone now, but his work will remain an absolutely incredible document of a time long past. I often sit and look through these photographs and I can't help thinking these people lived in a much better time. Hard times but better times. To me personally, Jack Young will always remain a major influence, a major inspiration in my own photographic career.
hope you've enjoyed this little review guys until next time when the weather's better and we can get out taking photographs catch you later